Good afternoon. I just received a video uh, uh, response from um, Masoretic Text, and um, I'll put that, I've allowed that so you can see that on my last video on the uh, King James Bible versus self proclaimed experts. Now, in that, uh, he showed some clips of me and saying that uh, if you can't prove an error, it's not an error, that it can't be word campaign translated. So, what he admits then is that uh, in that video is that he doesn't understand why a word is translated in a certain way. So, for, for then, so then it becomes for him an error. Uh, just because he can't understand it. And um, uh, that's not an error, just because uh, an individual can't understand why, why a particular translation is translated a certain way. doesn't mean it's an error, it just means maybe he needs to do a little more research uh, to understand it. Um, of course, I, told, I made the point that uh, what they were going to do is run to their computer skills and uh, look, at the, uh, look at the Hebrew word. And what he does, he runs to etymology. And running to etymology of a word is a fallacy. And, uh, and D.A. Carson's work on exegetical fallacies, uh, he points that out uh, as a common fallacy in semantics. And uh, it's called the root fallacy. One of the most enduring errors, the root fallacy, presupposes that every word actually has a meaning bound up with its shape or its components. In this view, meaning is determined by etymology, or that is, by the root or roots of a word. And so uh, that's, uh, that's exactly what the uh, Masoretic text is appealing to. Uh, the fact that that word usually means foreign is the etymology, uh, in use of the etymology. And the King James translators uh, uh, usually have that connotation. But in this uh, uh, connotation, this uh, verse, uh, the, uh, they looked at the verse itself and saw that these are foreign angels that were mating with human beings and they were creating another race. They were creating uh, a result uh, that uh, was unusual and uh, where you get the, uh, uh, the mythological uh, heroes of the uh, uh, ancient world, the Greek and uh, Roman heroes like Zeus uh, and Apollos. These people come from this this this, this uh, meeting between the, uh, the foreign angels uh, and the uh, mankind. They took all, all many women as they wanted and uh, and reproduced, and they got this um, uh, genetic uh, hybrid. But uh, the fact is, is that uh, the King James Bible isn't alone in translating uh, Genesis six four as giants. Uh, both the Geneva and the Bishop's Bible had it. Uh, the New King James has it, and uh, King James 2000, and the King James 21. Now, it's also we uh, uh, done again in uh, in Numbers uh, 13 uh, 33, and uh, we can pull that up. Uh, Numbers 30, 13 33. There we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come out of the giants, and we were on all sides as grasshoppers. And so uh, we were in their sight. And so there's that uh, Hebrew word is, is again being used that in, the con in the context of the uh, fallen angels and the, uh, the race they produced of, uh, of uh, superheroes. And the Anik, uh, the word, uh, would result of that, uh, they survived uh, somehow that genetic, uh, or actually it was a reproduction after that. They came after they did it, they did it again and after the flood. And that's one of the reasons the flood had to happen to destroy this race of, um, of uh, semi-humans. Um, but the fact is also in Numbers 1333, uh, you have uh, Bishop's Bible had it, Geneva Bible had it, Darby Bible, Din Tyndale had it, and uh, the, uh, uh, the New Jerusalem Bible has it as well in that translation. Uh, so uh, there's the case with, uh, shows up again, Numbers 1333, just like the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Giants did, they showed up again. And so Numbers 1333, and uh, they, they show that. So the context determines how it's translated. And uh, that translation is a correct translation based on its context. This is something Masoretic uh, text, uh, uh, also known as ancient Hebrew, refuses to uh, grasp. He wants to run to the, he thinks it's uh, math. He thinks it's somehow a mathematical form, and you've got the, every, every two and two has to equal four. But uh, the, the issue in language is getting a sense of what the, uh, the language is actually saying. And uh, the etymology of the word is not the crucial aspect. The word is how, how the word is being used in its context. And uh, we had a discussion uh, some time back about constructive ad sensum. And uh, he just refused to believe that uh, ad, that was a big issue, uh, ad sensum. But in fact, it's crucial to understanding how to translate. Uh, translation is not only a skill, it's an art. You have to have a, have a great understanding not only of the language you're translating, but the language you're translating into, so begin, you can actually translate it. Uh, Add sensum here. Let me look it up real quick here. Add sensum, 
or a constructivized sense, of a word or words written or translated according to meaning rather than precise grammatical concord. Example, um, a singular collective noun may take a plural verb, uh, and gives the example of Genesis 120. Uh, and then uh, my people, singular, destroyed plural for lack of knowledge, Hosea 4, 6. Greek, a very large crowd, singular, spread plural, their cloaks, Matthew 21, 28. This is stuff that uh, uh, when you understand the language, you've got to understand why the translators are doing certain things. And because they don't do it your way, it doesn't mean it's an error. So he puts up these things and says, well, why did they do that? How could they do that? And I don't understand that. He put up that one in Genesis 25, uh, 31, Exodus, uh, Exodus 25, 31. And then, uh, he had the feminine, the feminine pronouns. And they said, well, could, you know, these are feminine. Well, no translation used the feminine pronouns. They used the neuter, uh, and all they, all they used the masculine, and uh, as Geneva did. Uh, so uh, here's a guy who, uh, this is private interpretation, no different than brain Audi. Um, and all these guys get up in front of the pulpits who want to uh, correct the King James Bible and say these guys must have got it wrong because I can't understand it. Um, no, you just have to understand what the Bible says. And these guys understood the Bible. Not only were they know their Hebrew, not only they know their Greek, they knew their Bible as well and understood the context. And when you find uh, multiple translations, you can't just throw them all out and say, well, they were wrong. You have to explain why, how could they get this wrong and uh, show that the interpretation might be wrong. But certainly it can be translated that way. And that's what this, this is what Master Ed Tesla was going to, wasn't going to state. Like, oh, these guys got it wrong. They didn't understand the third person. They didn't understand it was a feminine, plural, a feminine pronoun. Uh, no, they understand it was a feminine pronoun uh, in, uh, in Exodus 25, 31. They just understood the context. And uh, as well as the modern translators, they knew it was also a feminine uh, 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 pronoun. And, but these guys get in there and they just want to uh, uh, show up their own knowledge. And uh, this deceives many people who aren't aware of the intricacies of translation and uh, are wowed by this. So, wow, he must be right. Look at that Hebrew. Oh, wow, hey, look, at, look, at, uh, look at that Greek. Look at they can read the Greek. Oh, my goodness, how could he be wrong? Uh, this is very superficial and uh, uh, lazy because uh, he doesn't explain uh, or go into the things that, well, these guys did it this way and these other translations have this, but. Uh, he just puts out the uh, etymology of word and shows you, look at that evil word. Look, I, I can't be wrong. Uh, it's, it's an offending. How could, they, how could these guys do it? This is uh, sloppy uh, thinking, sloppy translation, and uh, shows a spirit, a spirit that, uh, you know, he, it, it's, it's an arrogance. It's an arrogance. So he's not going to be corrected. He's, he's got the right interpretation. Just like Brandon Audi. She's got the right interpretation. These guys are all the right interpretation. Everyone else is wrong, and uh, they got it right, and therefore, they're gonna, you know, you have to follow them because... Uh, they know it, and so they put their computer uh, uh, computer skills up there, and people look at them and say, wow, look at that. Wow, he can read the Hebrew. Ooh, wow, that's impressive. Well, a lot of people read the Hebrew. Modern translators read the Hebrew. Uh, certainly the King James uh, translators knew the Hebrew, and there's a reason why they make a translation. And if you're going to prove an error, you have to explain that they couldn't do it the way they did. Amen. Thank you.